You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you've enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Hello, this is Richard Jacobs with the Future Tech Podcast. Uh, my guest today is Tommy Joyner. He's the head of a company called Content Pros, and the website is contentpros.io. So, Tommy, thank you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've uh, I've been in marketing, you know, for uh, nine or ten years, and uh, so I I should be able to understand what we're talking about. So, tell me, what was the premise of uh, of Content Pros? What's the idea for the company? So Content Pros is a writing service. Uh, we basically sell monthly uh, subscriptions in the form of packages of words to our customers. Uh, and then we fulfill the writing production uh, for the people that we work with. So we end up uh, working mostly with, uh, well, historically, when we started out, we worked with a lot of uh, software companies. So a big portion of our customers ended up being uh, B2B SaaS com- customers of of different sorts across a few different uh, and we also work with a lot of uh, SEO and digital marketing agencies to fulfill their content production needs. Okay, so content is driven by what Google wanting content for websites so they can, you know, get rankings in SEO or like what's the whole reason for content? Is it for customers that they engage with companies better if there's content or like, what are all the reasons you see? Content is like a very ambiguous term online these days. Uh, it's also kind of a hot topic. Everyone talks about needing it. Um, we're not in the business of convincing anyone that they need it or they don't. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can drive leads and make money online these days or create uh, some sort of awareness for your business. Um, but where, where we specialize and sort of the, the gap that we fill in the marketplace is there are a lot of companies that do want content um, and they just don't have the hands on deck uh, to produce it in the way that they would like uh, up to a standard that's actually uh, quality for them. So the, the niche that we sort of filled in the marketplace when we started our business uh, from the very from the very beginning uh, was we recognized that um, a lot of people needed uh, or wanted to have their content calendars uh, produced, and they were having trouble finding freelance writers, um, or they were having trouble or couldn't afford an in-house writer. So they were looking for alternatives, but the alternatives fell short in the sense that they couldn't find writers that were good enough to produce the type of quality of content that they would actually be proud of publishing on their site. Um, so we've created mm-hmm. more of a premium uh, writing service that allows us uh, to charge a little bit uh, of a higher rate, but also produce at a much higher quality than, than our competitors uh, on sort of a real-time basis for our customers. So our turnaround is really quick. Um, and that's essentially that's essentially what we do. So, uh, you know, I'm not... I'm not a content marketing guru by any means. I, I, I figured out how to uh, put together a, a business that uh, fills a need in the marketplace that really kind of uh, satisfies uh, some of the do- desires that customers have that I, that I just spoke about. So content is what? It could be an article, a video, mm-hmm. um, you know, a podcast. I mean, what else, you know, a picture with the description right. below it. I mean, content can be many of those things, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I guess I should define that as well. I mean, we're we're strictly a writing service, as I mentioned at the beginning. So uh, you know, the content that we focus on uh, generally uh, ends up being living on our customer sites uh, or as guest posts, as blog articles. Uh, so we'll put together really, uh, really in-depth blog articles. Most of the stuff that we do ends up being slightly longer form um, than you would see uh, maybe some other people posting. A lot of stuff that we write is uh, probably, probably on average, like 1,200 words long. You know, a lot of people will put blog posts out there that are are much shorter than that. Um, but mm. a lot of what our customers come to us and request 
are things that are, are a bit more in depth, a bit more researched. But yeah, so to answer your question, we do strictly writing um, uh, for our customers. And most of those things that we write end up being uh, well-researched blog articles, case studies, or press releases. And then what kind of research is needed? Are there certain industries that it's harder for you to do this in versus others? Um, you know, let's say medical conditions versus, uh, you know, plumbing service. What, what industries do you serve? Yeah, that's a really good question as well. So um, we, uh, I've, I've probably worked with like 1,500 writers over the course of the past five years. And what we do is we always have a bench of 100 writers on deck. Uh, and that's a curated list of writers that we've been able to build and modify over the past uh, five years. So there's a lot of different industry categories that we touch on at this point, um, just because of the, the the bench is so deep in terms of the talent that we've been able to recruit. Um, so every writer that we recruit comes to us with an industry specialization. Um, and uh, over the past few years and now having 100 writers, there's a bunch of different industries that we touch. Um, but just to give you an idea of some of the stuff that we write about uh, more often than not these days, I mean, we write a lot about, um, like I said, we work with a lot of different B2B SaaS companies. So a lot of the stuff that we do is, is kind of tech related. We write a lot about uh, AI. Uh, we've done some virtual reality stuff lately. Um, of course, cryptocurrency and cannabis have been uh, really hot topics that are trending. So we've built out our writing team around that. Uh, and then some other stuff that's more related to uh, different segments of digital marketing, et cetera. So I won't say that there's nothing that uh, that we can't do, but um, but just due to how how big our writing team is now, um, there's there's a pretty wide variety of of what we touch on and and a pretty wide variety of what we're, what we're able to deliver with a high uh, high industry specialist specialist as the person who's writing about it, rather than just the generalist. Um, so like I said, our writers come to us and they're recruited specifically based on, on what they can write about. Mm. So what have you observed that makes a good writer versus, uh, you know, a mediocre one and especially within these verticals? Mm. That's a really interesting question. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I mean, writing is a really dynamic thing. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, uh. It's an interesting question because I built out our, our entire hiring process, but then I hired someone to take this over for me, and she's done an amazing job of, of building our writing team, and she has even better eyes than I do um, as mm -hmm. someone that can judge quality talent. But um, I think what makes a, a really good writer uh, off the bat is uh, being able to um, kind of think a little bit outside the box in terms of the content that they're putting together. So we look for uh, uniqueness. I mean, there's so much, there's so much different writing out there these days. When someone delivers delivers us a sample post, it's really hard to stand out from the noise, um, unless they've taken a specific angle that's kind of interesting. Um, like we really, we really praise thoroughness. Um, so uh, for at least the stuff that we do, I mean, it's less creative writing and more straight up, well researched kind of nonfiction articles that need to have. Uh, sufficient proof and backing and need to be organized in a certain way. So uh, we really look for appropriate citations. Uh, we look for those to be integrated really well throughout the article. And then we really look for like good form uh, and organizational structure in a way that reads logically. So uh, in my mind, for the stuff that we do, at least, you know, a good writer um, can be unique. They can organize their writing. Uh, they can cite it appropriately and they can make a really good case uh, for whatever they're trying to present. So what's the uh, what's the effect you know you, of the happy clients you have? And I'm sure there's a lot of them. What are they telling you that the content's doing for them? What are they experiencing? Um, yeah. So like there's so I uh, this is I mean this is a, it's an interesting question that you ask because I get the sense that like we're talking about ROI or like why is this content good for this person's business? Um, and that's all well and good. And like certain uh, customers have been with us for over three or four years and they've experienced tremendous amounts of organic growth on their site from the content that we've produced which they have published that has very little to do with us and more to do with their promotional and syndication strategy which is not something that we're a part of my company is set up to produce awesome articles that they couldn't uh handle and manage themselves otherwise and that's the void that we fulfill so uh as i mentioned i mean we don't sell on roi which i think makes us a little bit unique so we've essentially kind of commoditized our service in a way. Um, and where we really stand out is being able to deliver a higher quality content than you could find with 
a lot of the in-house writers that you're hiring or freelancers on your own in a process that's more structured, way more streamlined uh, and managed. So for some of our customers, the content, I mean, it, it delivers them a lot of results. Um, but that's largely based on like how they're setting up their content marketing strategy. Uh, you know, this world is really, uh, uh, it's really dynamic. So there's a lot of different things that are involved there in terms of what makes uh, your content successful. You can't just expect to put a bunch of blog posts on your website uh, and have that blow up. You need to have a little bit of a method to your madness. And then for other people, I would say the big advantage of working with us is like, I mean, we save them time. Um, they want to produce these articles. They don't have the time to do it. So there's some CEOs or some smaller companies that we work with that still have enough money to have a content marketing budget, um, but they can't they can't organize and structure this on their own. So essentially, we operate as like an extension of their team, and where we really help them is just by saving them time. So does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so a couple of questions about the content strategy. So do you pick a, per a particular person's voice? an attempt to emulate it or give it a voice, you know, like, you know, Mike, the uh, CTO of ABC company, uh, you know, do they want content all written in his voice to make him authority? Or do you write just from like a corporate third person voice? And, you know, then maybe go into like some strategies and what makes successful content versus just a bunch of random blog posts torn up on a site. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question as well. And I think another thing that kind of sets us apart. So, I mean, we, we go straight all of our content, but we're able to do it um under the voice of of whom whomever uh, our customers would like so uh um in terms of so let me let me think of how i want to say this but um we 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 write the content under and it's published under whoever the the company would like so yeah oftentimes we'll publish as the cto or the ceo or maybe they'll have like a marketing manager that they've been publishing blog articles under and that's the person's voice that we will assume. And we go through a bit of what we call like an idea extraction process on the front end um, where the writer uh, that's actually assigned to the account because uh, because our, our customers have the ability to work with the same writer or switch writers as often as they would like. So a lot of our customers prefer to work with the same writer and develop a relationship. So when we do our writer customer match on the front end, I mean, we're looking to find a writer that can dig in a bit more and really learn um, our customer's voice and what they're going after. So after a couple of calls and doing a couple of pieces together, that's where that process really starts to gel and mesh a little bit more. Um, and if we continue to write under the, the, the voice of the same person, um, that process continues to evolve in a way that usually ends up uh, pretty well. So yeah, we learn the, the voice occasionally there's a customer that comes on board that's very, very subjective. Um, and, you know, they, they want everything to sound exactly uh, like them. And there are certain cases in, in which case uh, it just makes sense for whoever's right, writing the content just to continue writing the content. Um, so it, it kind of depends on what people are looking for. But we can absolutely emulate uh, a lot and, and do a really good job of, uh, of publishing as, as our customers would like. So what have you seen as a good strategy that really helps build the content so you don't run out of things to say and so you build relationships? Um, well, I mean, I think consistency matters. Like, I think just getting started in consistency is huge because at first, I think as in anything, your uh, your strategy, you know, after a year or two years might end up looking entirely different than it did uh, a year or two years prior. So um I think like at least for the people that have started out have it ultimately ended up having success, you know, picking uh two to four really solid topics per month that they want to dive into um and pu start publishing on really allows them to 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 get some content out there, start getting some data um and understand what's working uh and what's not in terms of what people are reacting to. So, uh genu genuinely if people are looking to to get started, I recommend that uh, you start sort of small. I mean, even as little as one article per month is effective. One to four, I would say, is like more than enough at first. Um, I also recommend that those articles are at least uh, 1,000 to 1,500 words uh, long and written in such a way that uh, they provide a lot of value. Um, those articles generally perform better. Um, and honestly, uh, the longer the articles in a lot of cases, uh, if, as long as they're well written, just continue to p perform better um, the longer that the articles are, which I know is sort of counterintuitive to what a lot of people think in terms of how folks consume online these days. Um, 
but uh but yeah it's a tough question to answer because there's so there's so many different strategies that people can take that are successful um but that's that's definitely one thing that i would say about what i've seen as as far as how kind of newbies have evolved you ever have writers say like i don't know we ran out of things to write about what do we do now um well uh we have so so there's a bit of a of a cooperative process in terms of how we produce ideas for our customers. Um, so uh, our customers come to us a lot of times with, uh, you know, some of the customers that we work with, I mean, they're, they're bigger SaaS companies uh, or they're a bigger agency and they already have a content calendar built out. So they're, they're actually responsible for coming up with the ideas uh, in many cases. And then we'll actually do the fulfillment and the research associated with the ideas to produce that for them. Um, in other cases, we'll actually help our customers with ideas. Um, but no, we've definitely never run out of ideas. Um, there's there's so many different things to write about, about whatever topic there is. And if you're solely thinking about how to come up with different ideas or put a spin on something else, I mean, there's always ways to, to chop up content or take spins of things that you, you have pre- previously written and dig, 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 uh, dig deeper. I've heard once that um, it's a good idea to go back to old blog posts that haven't been refreshed yet after six months or a year and add to them. And that's a good way to get more, uh, you know, traffic to them. Have you heard such a thing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, keeping your content up to date is super important. Um, I think uh, especially with certain types of posts that you put together that might be like a guide uh, or, you know, top tips in X industry for 2019. Um, you know, those types of posts, especially if they perform well, just creating a new one for every year uh, or updating them. Uh, you know, it might be an evergreen post that's essentially the same process, but every year things might change and evolve, right? So you might not even have the year in the title, but um, but things are, are evolving and dynamic. So every time that you update that content, you'll be rewarded uh, for when that uh, actually gets uh, refreshed. Um, and, you know, over time, that content definitely becomes a much more powerful piece. Um, and I think, yeah, that's, that's actually kind of what happens there. Like the way that content evolves like that, you're consistently updating it. It's not something that you can get right every time the first time. So the more dynamic and, uh, alive a piece is, the, the better, the better that's, uh, that's going to do. So yeah, I definitely recommend updating your content at the same time. Um, I think uh, it makes sense to pay attention to your top pieces of content um, and even, you know, deleting old pieces of content that suck and are getting no traffic. Um, I'm kind of uh, of the mind that uh, you should just focus on your strengths in terms of what's working. So uh, there's often times where it makes sense also to delete pieces of content as well and just leave the pieces of content up on your site that are the ones that are really performing. And then do you sell in packages, like X number of articles, or how do you place your stuff and package it? Yeah, so you can get started uh, with as little as 500 words per month with us, um, and then you can build your package uh, based on however many articles uh, you would like. So we do have a couple of recommended packages that people can check out on our site at contentpros.io. You can check out our pricing, and there's a sliding scale that shows you how much everything costs. Uh, but essentially, we have uh, we have an a la carte uh, per word pricing, and then we also have monthly, quarterly, and annual pricing. So depending on the pricing options that uh, that people pick, um, that pricing fluctuates per word. And uh, is there any term limits for the uh, content? Do you just go like piece at a time, or like you said a uh, year agreement, or month to month, or what is it? Uh, yeah, so um, it depends on the option that you select. Uh, I would say most of our customers are actually on quarterly or annual packages. So if you sign up for a quarterly or an annual package, uh, you pay up front for the content that you get. Um, so you're you're in for a quarter or a year. Um, we do have 100% um, money back guarantee in terms of your customer satisfaction. Uh, so there is that peace of mind as well. Um, but then we're as flexible as you know having a monthly account uh, or doing a la carte. Um, our monthly, quarterly, and annual pro- uh, pricing m- much more affordable. Um, so generally, when people get started, if they're testing the waters, they'll start with a monthly package uh, rather than all a la carte. But we also do have a uh, discounted offer on the front end for anyone that's interested in trying us out, where you get uh, 60% off your first uh, your first order, and that allows people to go through the entire service um, and see see what they can get. 
And then how long do you estimate it takes to have an effect? <clears throat> you know, is one month enough or is it really like six months when it starts to kick in? Um, yeah, well, I mean, like I said, anyone who just is going to start calling, like this is, I mean, this is, a. Uh, this is important because anyone who thinks that they're just going to sign up for a content writing service and do results uh, is really kidding themselves um, because there's there's just a lot of strategy and a lot of thinking that goes into setting up a content marketing strategy for yourself. So, I mean, you know, I would say that uh, in general, um, posting consistently, um, you'll start to see um, some movement maybe after six months. Um, I mean, a lot of people don't see significant uptick or results from their content marketing until a year or 18 months after they've started posting. So a lot of this stuff pays, uh, pays kind of, is, is kind of like compound interest and pays dividends down the line. Um, but, you know, in some cases, especially if people are good at promotion and syndication, uh, yeah, you could put a really good piece together and, and get it on, on the right, uh, right media channels and, and have it take off right away. So I've seen other cases where people post their first piece of content. It just uh, just blows up and goes viral. So, um, so yeah, that's another difficult question to answer. But in general, you shouldn't. Uh, you definitely shouldn't have a, a short-term mindset if you're you're thinking about incorporating content marketing into your business. And you shouldn't even start unless you have a little bit of strategy thought out. Don't just go to a company like us and start churning out pieces of content and, and expect us to do something for you. And if people want uh, to promote it, do you work with companies that specialize in the promotion of it? Yeah, we have partners in SEO and uh, promotion and syndication, uh, as well as strategy. So we have partners on all three sides of uh, the business that we uh, don't do. Um, and uh, we can put, uh, we oftentimes do put our, our customers directly in touch with them. So these are all people that are vetted that we know that we know in the industry that, uh, yeah, have been around for a long time. Like I said, we've been in business for uh, over five years now. So we've got a lot of uh, good people in the space that we rely on and trust um, to take care of our customers. Well, very good. So what's the best way for people to get in touch to find out about, again, your offering? Um, yeah, well, people could check us out at contentpros.io. Um, that's the best place to go. Uh, there is uh, a CTA on our website um, that, uh kind of points people in the direction of getting started on a discounted trial with us. Um, you can learn a little bit more about um, the type of stuff that we work on, uh, see some uh, testimonials and case studies on there as well, um, and get a better idea of, of what we're all about. So contentpros.io is definitely the best place to, uh, to check us out. All right, very good. Well, Tommy, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Richard. I really appreciate it, man. Um, it was a really good chat. You're listening to the Future Tech Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies such as artificial intelligence, stem cells, 3D printing, gene editing, Bitcoin, blockchain, the microbiome, quantum computing, virtual reality, and exploring space are much closer than you might think. In fact, many early versions of these technologies are in play right now, and the companies that are using these technologies are the focus of this podcast. My goal for you, the listener, is to learn from these podcasts. You may very well learn something that may change the course of your life for the better, steer you towards a new career, or give you insight into addressing a thorny medical problem. Remember, this podcast and its content is informational in nature only. No medical, tax, legal, financial, or psychological advice is being given. If you enjoyed the podcast, please listen, subscribe, like, and tell your friends about it. Thank you. Thank you.